Thank you for joining us for the, our annual Community Leadership Luncheon. I'm Priscilla Q, 2019 Chairman of the Northwest Oklahoma City Chamber, and I want you to know how much we appreciate you being here today. I'd also like to recognize all the Leadership Program alumni to rise. We have 36 graduates from 13 different classes here today. It's important to note that the last five chairmen uh, are graduates of Leadership Northwest, including myself, who was 2007. Uh, you'll find that our leadership alumni are leading nonprofit organizations throughout our community, heading professional associations, and serving in elected offices and governmental positions. We're excited to share this 25th anniversary of our Chamber's leadership program, and I'd like to encourage each of you to invite someone to be a part of the class next year. We're also pleased to welcome Bethany Mayor K.P. Westmoreland, Bethany Vice Mayor Jeff Knapp, uh, Bethany City Council Member Kathy Larson, uh, I saw Bethany City Manager Ken Smart, and War Acres Mayor Jim Mickley. So thank you all for being here as well. <laughs> We especially want to thank our table sponsors who have helped make this event possible. So uh, McPeat and Associates, I saw you all right here. Uh, Sandler Training of Oklahoma, we're Sandler Training, Francis Tuttle Technology, and the City of Bethany. Thank you guys so much. Um, as we're celebrating our 25th anniversary of this program this year, we're also celebrating our 80th anniversary of the Chamber. And I'd like to ask Bethany Mayor K.P. Westmoreland to join me here. Over the years, the City of Bethany has been a sustaining member of the Chamber and our, the programs that we offer. And because of this enduring relationship that we have with you, we would like to present this plaque. And thank you for the positive influences that you've had on our community and growing forward in the future and the plans that you all have put forth. Uh, we just appreciate all that you've done for uh, Northwest Oklahoma City, Bethany in particular. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> It's an honor to get to accept this on behalf of the city of Bethany, um, and we completely are honored to have the partnership and the relationship with the chamber. Uh, with your leadership, Priscilla, this year, and Jill and McCarthy's um, involvement and leadership with the chamber, as, as well as Paige Porter, that's helped us with a lot of things that we've got going on. Um, but it takes a team. It takes a team to do what the city's doing. It takes a city council that's on board that, that is passionate like all of us are. It takes city staff. We've got a lot of things going on in the city of Bethany we're excited about. Um, and in speaking with a few of them earlier, we'd be honored to be able to host the Chamber's Leadership Program for next year. Oh, great. Thank, Thank you. you. so much. Well, I'm wearing two hats here today as the 2019 Chamber Chairman, but also as President of First Bethany Bank and Trust, the presenting sponsor of this luncheon. We've been involved with the Community Leadership Program since its inception and have continuously used it as a resource to help our employees develop as professionals and as members of our community. In fact, our table is full of all graduates, and we actually couldn't have everybody that has graduated uh, from the program be here today. Um, it's one of the best investments we make in creating long-term relationships for our people. Through that, 
we see positive results in their job satisfaction, their commitment to our mission, and our passion for growth within the community. And I am, as, as president of the bank, I am very passionate about this program. It has offered a great opportunity for our employees to grow. I think they feel like that we're committed to them. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful learning experience. We, we grow up in our community, but oftentimes we really don't make, know what the things are that make it tick. And uh, so we, we totally endorse this program and think it's a wonderful opportunity. And um, so I appreciate my, my employees there. I have a waiting list for people who want to uh, go through the program. So that's always nice too, but I think it speaks well to the program. As employers, I want to encourage each of you to take advantage of the opportunity of this, employ of this program and think of someone within your organization who might appreciate uh, the growth that it creates. There's many upcoming events as we have a full meeting, and so I would uh, encourage you to read about uh, what's coming up yourself. I think that uh, on the table there's some, some uh, activities that we have and some events, but I especially want to invite you to Bolarama that's coming up June 6th. It's a great opportunity for your business to give back to the community but it's also a great opportunity for employee bonding uh, in this event. And um, I'd like to introduce uh, President Jill McCartney, who's a member of the class of 2011. Jill? I want to say that of all the alumni classes that are here, the class of 2011 has the most. Let's give it a hoot. <laughs> all right. Um, it's so good to see all of you guys again. Um, this last weekend, the chamber office um, had to move due to a flood situation into a temporary office. And that caused us to have to go through a lot of paperwork and move a lot of things that hadn't been moved for a while. And in that process, um, a file was discovered that was kind of like a time capsule. It was the uh, organizational file from the very first leadership Bethany program back started in 1992 in terms of their organizing. The class graduated the first class in 94, thus our 25th anniversary of the program. And so I think it's pretty interesting to see um, some of the things that, that happened um, with that, first they created a board of uh, advisors for that leadership uh, program and, and the development. Um, they planned, they recruited, and then they were ready. October 18, 1993, the first class of Leadership Bethany began. They met once a month in the evenings at that time with topics on history, education, volunteer and social services, economic development, local government, and health care in this community. The purpose was to identify, motivate, and train emerging leaders through the development of their potential for community leadership by stimulating the interest in the quality of life and providing a common meeting ground of shared concerns among leaders from all sectors of the community. And that's very much similar to our uh, goals for the program today. Um, to share a little bit about what was happening at that time. Uh, we actually have amongst our membership today and here with us to share, um, Tim Brown. <laughs> uh, Tim Brown, um, uh, who is with Hamilton and Associates and he was one of the founding board members. Tim. Thank you, Jill. Um, pardon my voice, first of all. Uh, a couple weeks ago when I noticed uh, on the agenda the schedule of events for the chamber and the upcoming uh, this event, and I noticed that it was the 25th anniversary of the leadership program, it hit me that I think I was part of that. I think I was involved in that. And ironically, not too long ago, I came across in some stuff in my office at home the brochure or pamphlet 
that we use at that time. And I think the first class, the picture right here, is the members of that of that first class. Um, if if you had a, saw my picture in this, you would not recognize me. Um, I don't, I'm not sure Jill, when she called me yesterday, thought I was the Tim Brown that was in this picture. Uh, I had dark hair and a dark beard at that time, and much larger bold glasses, which I think a lot of us wore in those days. But um, it, it was a great experience. I was serving as a, on the city council. Uh, I served for nine years on the city council of Bethany, so I was involved and in, very interested in, in economic development at that time. And I was also serving on the board of the, of the chamber. Uh, I had my office right there in the building where the chamber office was at that time, right on 39th Expressway. Uh, we had a great team of leadership uh, uh, directing our steering committee, Larry Shaw, Richard Gertson, uh, Gary Unruh. Uh, we just had a, a great team. Unfortunately, of that group, I think three of them have since passed away and are no longer with us, and we, we miss, them, miss them deeply. Um, Phil Shirey, who I sat next to on the horseshoe for many years, and I had developed a great friendship uh, serving on the city council. And um, I did not realize until Jill told me yesterday when we were talking that Phil had passed away. I had talked to him back in the fall. He actually called me and asked me to run for city council again. And um, I said, you know, I've been there, done that. I was glad to serve. Um, but I think it needs to be somebody younger than me uh, doing that. So, But it was a great time in Bethany. We had a lot of great projects. As you always have projects going on in the city. You always have needs, thing, infrastructure, economic development that you're trying to, uh, trying to get going in your, in your city. So um, I don't recall a lot, particularly about the leadership class itself, but I, uh, I'm still proud to live in Bethany and uh, work, work nearby. So it's good to be here. Thank you, Tim. One of the other things we found in that file were some uh, cards like this, some note cards. And actually each person in that class wrote on the card. On one side they wrote their name and why they wanted to, to be in the class, what they hoped to get out of it. And on the other side they wrote, what is my wish for our community? And I'd like to share with you some of those because um, their tomorrow is our today. And um, it, it just really hit me with that. Um, uh, some of the things they wanted to see. A developing spirit of positive cooperation, people working together for the common good of everyone. That more people of this community would become involved in building a better community also the development of loyalty and commitment. I wish that our area would be able to bring in stable economic forces that would provide sustaining growth both in increased population and economic well-being. I'd love to see a collective vision that is worked on and shared, a collection of people and groups, much less turfism. Um, you know, those goals that they had at that time ring true today. and, and um, I, I think it's a very exciting time today in our community. I know in War Acres, we just got bonds passed, and there's a, a renewed investment in infrastructure there. In Bethany, um, there's a whole uh, Bethany renaissance starting um, with all types of, of economic development and, and community and, and the new library and many different things converging at this point in time. And so um, we are at a real great time in, in our community. Um, but let's leave something, let's, let's us look to the future now. Um, what is, what are things going to be like 25 years from today? On each of your tables, there is a stack of index cards. Before you leave here today, I want each of you to take one of those cards and write your name on it and write, what is your wish for our community over the next 25 years, or it could be tomorrow too, um, but, but what is your wish for our community? Please leave those filled out cards on the table. We're gonna collect them and um, we're gonna look at them now, but we're also going to um, uh, save them and share them 
for 25 years from today when they look back at this. Thank you for your time today. Priscilla? I also want to say just we're uh, uh, talking about the 25th anniversary of the leadership class. I happen to be see, I happen to see sitting back here in the back Bill Hancock, who was the president of the chamber uh, when this started, this program started. So right, well, right after. Uh, right after. Okay, okay. I I know it was it was a long time ago that you were there. So welcome, Bill, to uh, to this event and celebration. Uh, I feel like this is uh, kind of your baby, yours and Tim's, I guess. So anyway, we're glad you're here. Uh, with that, uh, please, yeah. I have the pleasure of introducing our guest speaker now, Philip Hatfield. As a lifelong encourager, motivator, and people builder, Philip truly became the transformational leader when tragedy struck him personally. Through adversity comes triumph, and today Philip is an author, a coach, and speaker working with people around the globe. His books, Carried by Angels, Be the Transformation, and Contagious Encouragement, have inspired people of all ages and in all works of life to experience more positive, passionate lives. So please join me in welcoming Philip Hatfield. It's a big event for me. I drove up from Dallas yesterday. But to sit here and what Jill was telling me earlier about the time capsule and finding that information of what people spoke truth about to happen in the future. Now, let me ask you a question. I'm not a member of your community. It sounded to me like a lot of those were positive affirmations that actually came true. Would you agree with that? Oh, okay. Let me, let, let me start over. Wow. I can say that backwards. Wow. All right, so let me tell you this right now. Number one, I am not just going to be your speaker. We're going to have a day where we're going to be actively involved. Okay. I'm changing my name. My name is not Philip Hatfield. Forget that. My name is Coach. Okay. So what is my name? Coach. Coach, my name is Coach. Now, when Coach asks you to do something, you do it, right? right. All right. So let me ask you this. My name is Coach. And I ask you to do something, you're follow through, correct? All right. Now, if you do not do that, I'm going to change my name later. My name will be Mom. <laughs> so I'm going to ask everybody to do something. Everybody will stand, please. Everybody stand to your feet. I'm going to tell you, you have three minutes, and I have something very special I'd like to ask you to do. And I would like 100% participation. How many hands can I get to raise that you will participate? All right, I got you all. Okay, guys, you have about, uh, let me give you about three, four minutes. I want you to move around the room. I want you to find people you know, and maybe someone you just met today. But I want you to find people. I want to ask you if you would please look them in the eye. Tell them something you like about them and why. Now, it can't be the pulley glasses. It can't be their sexy leg, because I got the sexiest leg in the building. You know how I really got the best leg in the building? I had a lady I was in a, in a restaurant the other day. She was telling me, oh, your leg is so pretty. It's so beautiful. She was an elderly lady. She just kept going on. I said, well, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I said, well, you're not so bad themselves. <laughs> but guys, I'm going to ask you, take three minutes, four minutes, move around the room, talk to as many people as you can, sincerely. Look at them in the eye. Think about something you like about them and tell them, Mike, I like you and what I like about you and why. Not their glasses, not their leg, not their Ferrari sitting out in the parking lot. Something about them. Are you ready? Get set. Grow. Clock is ticking.
around the room. You gotta talk to three people minimum. Move around the room. Move around the room. You gotta get the middle of three people. Move around. Let's come back to our tables. All right. Come back to your tables. Are you ready? Get set. It's time to grow. I hate to bring up such a fun party. All right. Everybody come back to your tables. I love it. Isn't it nice to see everybody communicate and talk? Cool. Cool. Man, I tell you what, did you guys feel the energy in the room as people move around and talk to each other? It was different than when you first walked in the room and began to talk to people. Because a lot of times we walk in the room and we start trying to network, right? So the thing that I like to talk about is sometimes networking is not working. Networking, when we come, when we come to a chamber of commerce event or any other networking event, we would just pass out business cards. So, hey, I want your business. If we don't need business, we're not coming back. You know what? That's not really networking. What you just did is networking. I'm going to take you a little bit deeper into networking than what you've just done, and I'm going to explain that to you. Now, let me ask you a question. Now, my name is who? Uh, Coach. Coach. Coach is going to ask you a question. We're going to get participation, right? right? How many of you, someone told you something they liked about you? Oh, I love it. Mike, I need some help. Where's Mike McPeak? Been around the room. Okay. All right, share. Who will share with us what someone told you they liked about you? Come on. All right, participation. Coach will come on me. Uh, my enthusiasm that uh, I bring to this role for the students. Very good. Oh, isn't that neat? Enthusiasm. Okay, come on, guys. Go to that. Go to that. Come on. What do you want to tell you that I like about you? It's um, my volunteerism. Ah, very good. Good. That's something that's very much needed, isn't it? We need more volunteers, okay? That I was friendly and helpful. Oh, that was great. Very good. Okay, let's keep these Sandra guys. I know these guys got something. Okay, guys, what they tell you to like about you? They just said every time that we have a conversation, you make me lose my way with a smile. Oh, wow. That's good. Okay, give me another Sandra guy. My passion for helping the new generation of people get into our business. Good. Very good. Okay, let's go on this side of the room. All right, here, here's a good table, Mike. Here's a good table. I look at all these guys. They got big smiles. All they do is a little chamber table. Priscilla's got them all fired up and ready. So let's see what Priscilla, Priscilla, what someone tell you they liked about you? My joy. You what? Joy. Cool. That's a word we don't hear much of anymore is joy, isn't it? All right. Come on, chamber table. Talk to us. What someone tell you they liked about you? Compassion for them. Oh, isn't that cool? Compassion. Leadership and compassion. Leadership and compassion. All right, we've got another table over here, Mike. Come on, come on. We got to get them all. We got to get every table. I'm trying to work my lunch off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, being a gentleman and being welcoming. Oh, very good, very good. All right, this lady in the red dress has a beautiful smile. For being like a mom. Oh, isn't that cool? We all like mom, don't we? Everybody got a mom? I hope we all have a mom, right? <laughs> Spark. Hey, tell us more about Spark. 
Tell us about your spark. <laughs> that I have energy and a spark in everything I do. Cool, that is neat. He's a former cheerleader. Oh, okay. <laughs> that I'm an idea person. Oh, good. Well, when I heard about Spark a few minutes ago, for some reason, they sent me at the table with the bishops and the pastors. And that was kind of an external fire insurance. <laughs> okay, give us somebody else here. For my support. Support. Oh, and we need to support people, don't we? Oh, yes. Come on. Table in the back. These are our workers, right? These are our Chamber of Commerce worker bees. Yes. I wish you would say that. Yes, we are. <laughs> Very good. Um, I got a compliment for my enthusiasm and the speaking I just did. Good deal. All right, there's two more ladies there. We can't let them out. She's getting it done, guys. She's a type B personality. Okay, did we get this table here, Mike? Oh, there's another lady there. Yes, let's. Did we get this table here? Oh, yeah. Uh, dedication to put myself out and try new things. Very good. Very good. Someone else here at this table? I see some pretty smiles up here. It's like they want to talk. They're just afraid to talk. Uh, being supportive and accomplished. Very good. Very good. One more table. I didn't get past the compliment on my blue eyes. No. I didn't hear anything after that. <laughs> hey, what is it supposed to be about your eyes? Come here, let me see. Come here, come here, let me see them eyes. Come on, come on, let me see them eyes. Let me see the blue eyes. Come on, come on, let me see them. I gotta see them. Oh, they are blue? Okay, I'll take your word for it. Yes, ma'am. For my enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Okay, one more for this table here. And my positivity and hyper detail. Ah, yes, the detail person. So I've got another question for you, okay? And I want to ask you this question. How did it make you feel? How did it make you feel for someone else to tell you what they liked about you? All right, now these volunteers. No, no, you got to keep that microphone. How did it make you feel? Okay, give me some hands up. How did it make you feel for somebody to tell you what they thought about you? Don't be bashful. Oh, right there in the back. Come on. It made me feel a little uncomfortable at times. Okay. Uh, that's true, isn't it? People don't usually do that. Yeah. Very good. Okay, someone else. How did it make you feel? Right over here, Mike. Humbled. Humbled. Wow. It does, doesn't it? It does make you feel humble. Warm and fuzzy. Ooh, warm and fuzzy. It's hot. What do you mean warm and fuzzy? It's a hot day. Warm and fuzzy. Don't we all like those warm and fuzzies? Just does something to us, doesn't it? Okay, give me some more. All right, come on. Encouraged. There you go. I love it. Encouraged. Come on. Give me some more words. Just blurt them out. Valuable. Valuable. Respected. Respected. Who said something over here? Positive. Positive. Come on, give us more. Good. Good. Affirm. Affirm. Oh, these are great words. Man, I just absolutely love them. I got one more question for you guys. I want you to really think about this. How did it make you feel? For you to tell someone else what you liked about them. How did it make you feel to share that? Blessed. Blessed. I love that. Honored. Honored, yes. Empowering. Empowering. Happy. Happy, yes. Grateful. Grateful. Wow. Isn't it funny? All we do is we talk to people, all we do is we share something we liked about them, but who got the greatest benefit? The person we talked to definitely got benefit, but yet we received more benefit by giving. You know, I do a, a lot of speaking engagements and they make me sign these contracts. Contracts say you can't say that about God or Jesus, but I'm just going to tell you. You know what? God has a crazy man. And it has nothing to do with money. It's the more you give, the more you receive. But when we talk about giving, we talk about money, talk about the things we forget the most valuable asset that we have is giving of ourselves to other people. You know what? I read that book they call the Bible. I read it through and through. By the way, I didn't believe in any of that stuff when I was 39 years old. And I don't know your faith. And I know there's probably many faiths in the room. And I'm going to tell you this right off the bat. And I don't care if you go to church. 
temple, synagogue, uh, mass, it doesn't matter where you go, get involved in your faith. Because you know what it says when we get involved in our faith? It says, I'm searching for truth, I'm seeking for truth. And as we search for truth, we're going to find the truth. But the more we truth that we find is the more that everything in that book is not all about money, but it's all talking about people. All talking about us, talking about community. I do a lot of business coaching, and I like to tell the businesses, you know what? Your business is nothing more than an extension of your ministry. Or let me put it to you this way. Didn't I tell you yesterday, Mike, they might, your business is your ministry? Guys, whatever we're doing, that is our ministry of whatever we're doing. And the more that we give, and the more that we help other people, and the more that we put it out there, the more it comes back to us. Now, we know we have to have commerce. We have to have sales, right? we got to make money. we got bills to pay. You know, commerce, God put commerce in, in place in the very beginning. You know, we can't all sit there and grow uh, the best crops in the world. My wife has the greatest brown thumb you've ever seen in your life. And she's on a new adventure. She got these little things called red and yellow plants that she started from seeds. She planted them, put them in water, tells me what to do with them every day. Lo and behold, if those things did start growing. And there are a couple of them about this tall. Wow. A little determination. A little just deciding, here's what I want to do. And she began to do something. And, and when I talk about my wife, I have to tell you very briefly. Uh, when I talk about her, uh, she's my bride. Greatest gift I've ever been given in my life. When I talk to her, I call her sweetie. But her name is Erica. And you know, that's the most sweetest name that I hear every day in my life is Erica. A sweetie in my life. You know, I was talking to you a minute ago about the more we give, the more we receive. What we forget to do as business people and getting involved in our chamber, getting involved in our community, what we forget about is our significant other. We become a little complacent, don't we? We take it for granted they know we love them, that we know we care about them, but yet we don't really tell them. And you know what, there's like four or five different uh, love languages that people have. There's words of affirmation, there's uh, uh, human touch, all different uh, uh, gifts that people have. But yet we don't affirm each other at home. Your business starts at home when you wake up first thing in the morning. And then what starts when you look in the mirror? And what do you do? The first thing you get up is you look in the mirror and you think of what are the things I'm grateful for. For me, I'm grateful I woke up. Ten years ago, I almost didn't wake up. I left the house on Sunday morning. I went to church that day. Usually I teach Sunday school class, but I wasn't teaching that day. And I got there that day, went to church, got on, got on my motorcycle, went riding all day. Then about 7.30 in the evening, I had an accident. When I got up that morning, I fully expected to make it home that evening. But I didn't make it home. I didn't make it home for a long time. Almost died seven times in the first 10 days. Very tough journey. But you know the greatest joy once I woke up from being out of a coma for a while was knowing the relationships that I had. You know, I've always had this thought in my mind that if I died, you know, they'd have my funeral, it'd probably be on a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. You know, people got to be at work. So, man, 30 or 40 people show up at my funeral. I thought, oh, you know what? That'd be cool. But if any indication of having my accident was what happens in your life, how many people do you touch in everyday life? It was like hundreds and hundreds and thousands. And I'm sitting there unconscious and don't even know these people are coming and visiting with me. I have no idea. All the lives that my life had impacted that I had no idea that they had impacted. As a business person, as a church leader, as a spouse, a husband, a father, a wife, the greatest thing we can do is let our significant other know who they are. Tell them, you know what? I love you, big Todd. You know, Patricia, would that be cool if your husband or your spouse tells you why they love you and you begin to understand that? You know, I remember when I first started dating my wife years ago. I wanted to get a date with her. So I finally got a date and we get out and go there. And finally, I decided I loved her. You know, for guys, it's hard for us to say that. Isn't it, guys? Oh, right, where's my sandbar, guys? There they are. Isn't it hard to tell the woman that you love them right off the bat? You kind of got that little bit of fear. And so I finally told her, I said, uh, uh, I love you. I thought she'd say, I love you back. No, she said, <laughs> she said, why? <laughs> so I had to have a pretty good answer why I loved her, right? So that was pretty good. We got on there a few months, and, and I would always tell her that I loved her because that was the word that never came out of my mouth. So when I finally decided to love someone, I was going to tell them all the time that I loved them. And I was going to try to show them I loved them. But then about six months later, I said, sweetie, I love you. She said, why? Oh. I better have another answer, right? And it better be different, right, ladies? 
It better not be the same answer because it goes and it grows. But in our complacency of life, we don't do that at home. And our business starts at home. Our relationships start at home. Our relationship with the Lord God Almighty starts with you and him together. And it's in those quiet places in your heart and in your home. But if we have not put on our armor when we get ready to come out here and go to business and work in the community and work in our businesses, how are we going to go out here and do good business with people? We can't. Because you know what? Uh, Joyce Brothers many years ago says, she said, you cannot perform in a manner that inconsistent with how you see yourself. If you don't see yourself as that person that was created and how magnificent and wonderful you are. How many of you guys remember a show years ago called The Six Million Dollar Man? Oh, there's all the old people in the room. I failed them. <laughs> six Million Dollar Man. Man, but think about it. For six billion dollars, for six hundred trillion dollars, another you cannot be made. There's only one of you. God gave you gifts and God gave you strengths. And in those gifts and strengths, you know, I go back, I like this guy David in the Bible here playing the harp. You know, King Guy, King David. I, and I know the Bible, I just I kind of make a little bit of fun with the guy. But, you know, he didn't just start playing that harp, did he? God gave him gifts, he gave him strengths. But you know what? He had to start honing them skills. He had to start working on them. Sometimes when you start playing them instruments, how many of you guys have kids that played in the band? Any of that? And you hear them ugly noises coming out of the bedroom and they say that's a trumpet sound or that's a harp? Can you imagine those sounds? But you take that skill and you take that gift you're given and you start honing that skill and it gets better and better and better. As we take these gifts of our chosen career paths that we have chosen, and we've chosen because we chose them because of our strength and because of our gifts, and we've been to hone those into skills, and we chose this path. But this path is an extension of you and your house and your household. Remember, everything starts at home. Your business starts at home with your wife, with your family, and with your kids. I want to challenge each one of you. I want to challenge you. I want you to take a piece of paper right now, everyone, and write, I like, and draw a blank. Okay? All right? So I'll draw a paper. So just remember, I like blank. And then you put a comma. Then you put because. In other words, you put I like, and you can write your significant other's name in that blank. And you're going to say because. And you can write them a tiny little nugget. How cool is that? Start getting love. But you don't go back to second grade. I like you. You like me. You said yes. We said no. Like, yes, we're still the same. Or you're still the same. How do you really start getting love that way? And that communication. And you start rekindling that relationship at home. Because the more happy you are at home, the more fulfilled you are at home, the more you're doing your duties at home, the more you will do your duties your job and your work and your community. You cannot perform in a manner inconsistent with how you see yourself. And as we started a few minutes ago with that uh, little exercise of telling people what I like about them and why, he said, you can start looking at what other people see about you. There are gifts and things that other people give us we do not even think about. We're so busy and worried about our day and worried about our business and doing those things that we don't see the gifts that we're really given. And therefore, we don't really take them gifts and multiply them. You know, humility. I was talking to Mike yesterday in his office, and I was telling him talking about humility. I love humility. Now, I heard the word humility. How many guys love the word humility? Now, how many of you are humble? Oh, I got one. <laughs> but you know what? We talk about humility, but you know humility is the greatest gift that we're given as leaders. You talk about leadership and your leadership group of video, the humility to say, I don't have all the answers. I don't know, but I'm willing to listen to you and I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to take your leadership class and see what I can do better. I'm willing to see what I can do better in my community. The thing of being humble, it makes you the strongest leader in the world. But we think a lot of times that humility makes us down here. We're looking down, people looking down. No, it just means we're a stronger person. We're able to look and see the gifts that we're given, able to use those and use them to the absolute best of our ability. After I had an accident many years ago, I was in the hospital a very, very, very long time. And so when I finally got back to work, I, I looked up and uh, there was no one in the Building, it's like, okay, I, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna try to walk. I had been in a wheelchair for quite a while, but I just got this prosthetic leg, and well, well, it was about 10 years ago. So I thought I'd get up, try to walk without a walker. So I get up out of my chair in the office, and I take a couple steps, and I get to the edge of my desk, and I go, and I get to the door, and I went, wow, I did it. Doing applause for myself. And then I said, I'm gonna go to the center of the, of the atrium. 
Jesus Christ. As soon as I get to the middle, get ready to turn around and go back, and all of a sudden I look up. There are those plate glass doors. And as I look at the plate glass door, there's the cutest little blonde headed girl about four years old. Got blonde hair, blue eyes, by the way, pigtails, just as cute as she could be. And she looked, she was trying to pull that door, she couldn't get it. Well, our big brother who was seven years old. I know he was a big brother because he told me later. So he's going to have to pull the door and he couldn't get it. So then there was mom and grandma, or it was grandma and mom. <laughs> they got the door open. As soon as they got the door open, the little girl, she looked up. She looked at me. Her eyes got as big as grapefruits. She got the biggest smile on her face. And she ran. She took three or four steps. She literally licked in the air. Boom! She made it in front of my leg. She grabbed that pole, started shaking it back and forth, and said, Mommy, Mommy, look, it's a transformer. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how big brothers are. They have all the answers, right? So all of a sudden, he pulled this little hero doll out of his little pocket. He started moving her arms and legs back and forth. He says, uh oh, oh. He's the Terminator. <laughs> You know, it's funny what happened to me that moment from a four-year-old little girl. Remember I talked to you about humility and we can learn from anybody and everybody? But God had sent me a four-year-old little girl and a seven-year-old boy. Because I've been through some traumatic stuff. Almost died. Really horrible. I'm not going to get into all of that. But I look at it and that little girl taught me, you know what? Bad things happen in life. Bad things happen in business. Bad things will happen in your chamber. But what are you going to do about it? Are you going to take the bad things and come out with a plan, make a plan, and work your way out of it? Did you want to take those negative things and let them transform your life, transform your career, transform your marriage, transform your church, transform your chamber of commerce? Bad things happen. There's only the attitude of what we have. Zinc always says you are who you are and where you are by what you put into your mind. You can change who you are, and you can change where you are by changing simply what you put into your mind. Because in our mind, we create these pictures. And sometimes in our mind, we put pictures of ourselves that are not true. We put pictures of our businesses that are not so because our businesses are struggling. Our financial picture doesn't look too good. We look at those pictures and we start claiming those pictures as who we are. I want to challenge you to change what you think, change what you read, change what you watch, and change what you do. I made a determination for that little girl that day that I wanted to be a transformer. I wanted to transform my goals, transform my dreams, transform my ambitions. I didn't want to terminate my goals. How do I live? I'm blessed to be alive. What am I going to do with these extra years that I've been given? And a lot of us, we get to make that same decision many times a day. Do we want to transform our business or do we want to terminate? Do we want to transform our relationships or do we want to terminate the relationships? What is it that you want to do? I decided right then that I wanted to be a transformer. So let me ask you a question real quick. All right, everybody stand your feet real quick. I got a question for you. So you were in my situation. You just walked out to the very front, and that little girl came up, and she grabbed your leg, and she shook your ankle, and she says, Mommy, Mommy, look, I'm a transformer. So what are you going to say? Do you want to be a transformer, or do you want to be a, a, a terminator? What do you want to be? Uh, I can't hear you. What do you want to be? Guys, we have to get it in our heart of who we are, what we are, how we're blessed, the skills that we have, keep working on these skills, honing these skills, and investing in other people. We have to look at others and tell them what we like about them and why. Our children, our children are starved for our love and affection. They're not starved for another game. They're not starved for another bicycle or another car. They're starved for our love and affection. They're starved for our affirmation. I have a grandson, 11 years old. We started trying to search him. He's having a few problems at home. He lives in Shreveport. We live in Dallas. So we started trying to see what is his love language. We began to talk to him. I thought it was gifts. You know what his love language is? Words of affirmation. So he's coming to Poppy's house. And you know what we're going to do? Number one, it's not just going to be a vacation this summer. We're going to work. He's going to have some chores. He's going to have to not look at that uh, little flat screen where I call all these little games that's been made for, for, for no more than one hour a day. He's going to have his rules. But you know what he's going to leave with? He's going to leave knowing that he's loved and he's appreciated. He's going to leave learning how to take the gifts that he's been given and make them into skills. Take them skills and be able to take care of your family, take care of your community. The skills that you have been given and the gifts that you have been given are a responsibility. You are to be a steward of those things. You don't do it alone. You can have a seat. You can't do it alone. None of this you do alone. Wonderful chamber of commerce, but it's not a chamber of commerce with one person. Is it? How can your business survive with one person? 
Now, I want to talk to you about how you treat your employees. Look them in the eye. Tell them what you like about them and why. Get on a real coaching program with them. Sit down with them in the very beginning and let them come up with the goals and dreams of what they want to do in their life. Then you help them to take them goals and dreams, and you begin to see how you can help them to achieve those goals and dreams. If they see you buy into their goals and dreams, then they'll start doing better performance on the job. And then as you do that, you start coming up with, okay, on accountability. So what do you think you can do next week? What's your, what's your next week's goal? And then you come up with that after you finish that quick conversation, say, okay, so what's your goal for the next from now? What would you like to have accomplished? And then you say, what's your goal in six months from now? You know what? They just gave you a goal plan. And Mr. Banker, I think we're working on a business plan, are we not? A business plan is nothing more than a well-planned out goals plan. Starts with you, starts at home, your goals plan for your family, and sitting down with your employees and those around you. Guys, when there's people in the cubicle next to us or wherever they may be, they need the words of affirmation. They need you. You are a valuable asset. They need you. Mr. Mayor, we need you. City Council guys, we're all the City Council guys in here. Where you at? We need you. We need you guys to run our city. You need to run our city better than our government runs our nation. I think we can say that. But we need you. And we love you. And we respect you. And we're behind you. Chamber of Commerce, we're behind you. But Chamber of Commerce, we're a part of you. We are a part of you. Our whole fabric is comes in together. Our families are part of the Chamber of Commerce. How many of you are members of the Chamber? Your spouse is a member of the chamber. Did you know that? Your kids are a member of the chamber. Did you know that? Your community is a member of the chamber. Okay, I don't know have people from the police, fire department, those guys here, but you know what? They're a member of the chamber as well. We need to get them more involved in what we're doing in our chamber so that we can achieve more of the goals, dreams, and aspirations of what we have in the city. And you know what? All it does is enhance our lives. And as I read that book, cover to cover, 66 books, one book they call the Bible, it's millions and millions of stories. But you know what? It all breaks down in one big story. And I have to tell you, I didn't, uh, I didn't make my profession fake because I was 39 years old. So all of you guys, I hated you. I want to tell you, I hated you. But transformation happened in my life. So when that transformation happened, and a man named Zig Ziglar began to take me under his wing and began to teach me some things, started sharing his faith with me, it took five years because everything had built up so hard. But you know what? Guys, a five-year project is worth it. I was worth it. I'm glad someone looked at me and says, he's got some skills, there are some things he has valued. And you know what the greatest gift that I have is to give back to other people. How can I help you to see your worth first? Because if you don't see your worth, you can't help someone else to see their worth. You know, I read my scriptures. It says, enter his gates with thanks. But I didn't get paid to be here. I'm on my own time. I can say what I want. <laughs> but he says, come to my gates with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is what you should be given every day. That other breath that you have of life. What are you going to do with those things today? All the people you are going to impact. This one man named Zig Ziglar. How many of you guys know Zig Ziglar? How many of you your lives have been impacted by Zig Ziglar? Hold your hand. We are lives that were changed by one man. And that one man's obedience to do what he thought was best, to live a life of character and integrity. You know what? To work home and do the same. And the more we do that, the more we can look people in the eye and say, you know what I like about you, Zig? And we can give each other what you like about you. And then we create a relationship. And as a relationship, then we begin to build trust. You know, you don't do business with people that you don't know. Like and trust, you don't know them, you start getting honest with them. You can't ask them for business when you, they don't know who you are genuinely. Are you really going to take care of my business? Are you really going to better, better my company? People know the authenticity when we're in business and sales, and we have to have commerce. We have to sell. But they know in our heart, is it just in it for the dollar, or is it genuine? How can I help you? The big most famous quote, and it's my favorite. People have misquoted it for years. We even did it at the Ziggler office. And I finally had to say, guys, we need to correct this. That's not a big quote. They passed away. It's now been uh, six years ago. And you hear this quote all the time. You can have everything in life you want if you'll help enough other people get what they want. How many of you guys have heard that? For years. It's great. Of course, we took it out of the Bible. I'll just take scripture and paraphrase it. Every quote you ever hear from Ziggler, it's a scripture paraphrase. But that's not what he said. 
He says, Mike, you can have everything in life you want if you just tell them that other people get what they want. You're in the insurance business, right? People got to have safety. They got to have security. They got to know you're going to be there. No matter what the other company says, they got to know you're going to be there. Uh, you're in the banking business, Priscilla. People got to know you, like and trust you, and you have to know, like and trust your client, don't you? When you give them money, you got to know that they're going to pay it back, don't you? You have all this paperwork that you have to do. Sometimes you go out on a limb, don't you? Kind of tough sometimes. You got to use a lot of those skills that you've been hungry for years to make that decision, don't you? You know what? I thank God that someone went out on a limb for me. God says, you get involved more in your home with your spouse first in your relationship with him. You get involved with others. It will change your business. Your sales career, it's your ministry. Because you're helping people get what they want. He says, you can have everything in life you want if you'll just help enough other people. That's all you got to do. If you'll just, and it means just put yourself aside. Get that. Just help enough other people. Okay, God? I'm about to cut you off. I hear a lot of that may be for me. It may not be. But I'm about to cut off. And I'm going to ask you one more time to stand. As we stand, I want to ask you a question. Do you want to be a transformer or a terminator? Transformer. What do you want to be? Transformer. Guys, I can't hear you. Do you want to be a transformer or a terminator? Transformer. Guys, let's say it one more time. I want to be a transformer. Ready? I want to be a transformer. God bless, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Philip, for sharing your story. Wow, that was powerful, wasn't it? And I'm going to stick this back up in here. Okay. Now I'm happy to present the Leadership Northwest Class of 2019 to tell us a little bit about their year. And to do that is Brian Hancock. Hello, everyone. I am uh, Brian Hancock. Uh, first of all, Philip, they are making a movie about the $6 million man starring the greatest actor of our time, Mark Wahlberg. So um, <laughs> I got uh, voluntold to uh, express a little bit about our, our Leadership Northwest class this year. Um, first thing uh, our class would like to do is thank all the people who volunteered their time and came and joined us in our class. A lot of the past uh, leadership class members, uh, about every class we'd have one or two would join us um, in, our, in our endeavor for that day and kind of lead the class. So um, if you were one of those, I didn't write everybody's name down to remember them, but if you were one of those, thank you very much. Um, we... Uh, you have the things on your table to sign up for next year's class, but basically it breaks down into nine different kind of categories. Um, the very first class you go to, you'll learn a little bit about team building. Um, you'll learn a little bit about yourself, your strengths, your weaknesses, and you'll learn how to partner up with people that kind of not only challenge you, but complement your, your, both your strengths and weaknesses. Um, that was an eye-opening class. I found out that I tend to joke everything off, which is probably true. Um, <laughs> if you all remember from the, uh, the uh, evening of accolades, I told Priscilla I was going to knock her off so I could be chamber president earlier. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I tend to make, uh, make jokes and make light of situations uh, when I'm uh, either nervous or stressed, and that was something that came out in that, that uh, team building effort. Um, we were supposed to that day go and do some things at River Sports, uh, which got postponed because it was pouring rain, um, which has been a common theme as of late, too. Uh, we went and visited nonprofit organizations. We went to the city mission. We went to Feed the Children. We learned about uh, voluntary um, aspects of, of being chamber members. Um, we visited with uh, health care facilities. Uh, we went to and learned from different uh, education uh, people in the state from college all the way down to uh, VOTEC and, and uh, even the high school. We had some of the uh, superintendents from the high schools come and visit with us. Um, one of the more interesting aspects that I uh, enjoyed from, the, from the, uh, the class was learning a lot more about state and local government. Um, I am a, an Oklahoma transplant. I moved here from Colorado about 15 years ago. And when I did, I just kind of ignored um, local politics, if you will. Um, I kind of paid more attention to the national politics. Um, learned a lot, I could say I personally learned a lot about 
um, what makes our, our, our state and local governments tick, and that was very interesting to me. Um, in, in kind of conjunction with that, we also, one of the classes is about economic development, and you learn about, oh, the, the, I think the funnest part of that was learning about all these little communities around the, the city that are popping up, like Paseo and the Plaza District and, and uh, the Automobile Alley area, and what, what it takes to get those going and, and how they've kind of helped the area. And then uh, we also learned about some public safety. Uh, we learned about the arts here in the city. I would say our, my, my, the best day or the best class was the day we went down and visited the, um, uh, the Oklahoma City Memorial. Um, it, I can remember right where I was when that happened and, and I was laying on a couch in, in Denver, Colorado when my mom called me and asked me if I'd heard about a building blowing up in Oklahoma City. I had a friend at, at school at the Oklahoma uh, uh, Law uh, law school downtown and she knew he was down there and, and called and asked if I'd heard from him so um, just go, going through and reliving the emotions of that day were, were really eye-opening and, and uh, to see where we've come from since then um, was an encouraging uh, day in, in all. Uh, we spent that day also going around and seeing some of the arts around town which you haven't got an opportunity to do I would encourage you to do. Um, I joined the, the Leadership Northwest class. I was encouraged by my peers to do so. I, I, one, for two reasons. I wanted to be more involved with the chamber. I wanted to take on a leadership role in the chamber. Um, I am the second vice chair, which is why I'm going to bump Priscilla off. Um, but, uh, and Lawrence, by the way. Lawrence, you're not getting out all alone. <laughs> Lawrence, too. Um, but um, I wanted to take on a, a larger role in the chamber and kind of help um, guide us for the next several years if I could. Um, that's one of the ways I chose in my profession to give back to the community. The second reason was I did want to learn more about the community I work and, and live in. So um, I got both those things out of this. I uh, really like to thank the Sandler guys. I know Mike came down one day and talked to us about leadership. That was probably one of the, the best speakers that we had that day. It was really, a, 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 we really appreciated it. Um, but we had a lot of great speakers, and uh, that was it. Um, this year's leadership class did something different than our, our predecessors. Um, instead of working on a group project, every year the, the, the leadership class has, prior to us had chosen a project to serve, something they were going to work on together as a team. This year it changed a little bit. Uh, we decided we would each individually pick different organizations to work with, and they were all happened to be charity or, or Philip. Uh, I'm not going to say that word right, philanthropic organizations. Um, I know we had members in our group that worked with Dell Rogers Training Center, um, PC School Foundations, the YMCA, um, Opportunities, uh, Industrial Industrialization Center, and the Bethany Improvement Foundation, just to name a few. I personally worked with My Heart's Appeal. Um, in my role, I helped them prepare for their annual fundraising event. Um, I helped... Uh, Call chamber members up, invited them to the evening. Um, I sold little ornaments they were selling to help raise money to fund the, the event. Um, I went over and helped. If you've not met uh, Love T. Major, um, she's the head of that organization. Um, you can't have a five minute conversation with Love T. about her organization. You might as well block out half a day. And, and uh, just the things that, the, that she does for um, her community um, and the people she serves with her schools in Africa. Um, was really uh, just, I really enjoyed listening to her and helping her out. So um, looking forward to next year's class, uh, some of the things we, from feedback we got from this year's class, we liked the individual projects, um, but there was some difficulty with some of that. So what we have uh, recommended next year is to possibly kind of uh, marry the two ideas. Instead of a big group project or individual projects, kind of maybe have two or three people working on on projects so you have a you still get that team feel but you also be are able to make a take a leadership role in helping a an organization out so um, that's something that will change for next year I believe uh, I hope our class will continue to uh, be involved in the chamber I know I plan to I hope that we are able or and are called back Jill to assist next year when when that need is is needed um, I plan on helping there too so that is it. I really appreciated the opportunity. I'm glad to be a member of the 25th class of the Chamber of Commerce, and I'm glad to get to know my fellow classmates uh, in much closer and much more personal than I had before. Thank you. So I'd like to ask class mentors Craig Foster and Jeff Knapp to come up and assist us as we present the class.
So we will uh, recognize the class individually, and I'll ask that each of you come up and introduce any guests that you have and share a little bit about your leadership experience or a future goal that you have. And our first uh, classmate is Sherry Adrian. Awesome. Well, I absolutely echo Brian's comments on the events that we participated in, and I'd like to extend just a really heartfelt thank you to Jill and the chamber staff and all of the session sponsors that set up those experiences for us. It was fabulous, and it's so funny to look back on the first day where Brian was saying it was pouring down raining and we were supposed to be getting in the water, and none of us knew each other, and we're talking about team building, and so everybody was kind of you know, nervous and a little standoffish and then fast forward a few months to being out at our whitewater event a few weeks ago and you'd have thought we were brothers and sisters we were like splashing water on each other they told us we could cheat on the event so let me tell you we were we were all trying to block each other and so what a fabulous way to not only get to know the city, but to know our fellow participants. So I really appreciate that. I do want to recognize a few people today. A great shout out to Francis Tuttle. Thank you for sponsoring Jenny and I. Jenny will be up next to talk to you. But Dr. Tom Friedemann's here with us. He's our superintendent. Dr. Jared Scott, our assistant superintendent of instruction. Dr. Audrey Lee, she's one of our instructional directors. Ken Cook, our marketing director, and our very own Jeff Knapp, vice mayor back here. So thank you for your support. And last but not least, Coach, tell me if I do this well. I want to recognize my husband. Thank you so much for being here with me today and supporting me. I love you because you're always there. And all of my crazy antics and things I get involved in, you stand right beside me. So thank you. Our second graduate is Jenny Crossland with Francis Tuttle. take just a moment to reiterate everything that Sherry said. Very blessed to work for a leaderful, leaderful, leaderful organization that believes investing in their people and growing them both personally and professionally. Um, a big thank you to the chamber. I grew up in Bethany, raised my family here in Northwest Oklahoma City. As Priscilla said earlier, it was eye-opening to me to see everything from a very different perspective. That community that I've always been a part of to really see how what goes into making that community what it is. So I appreciate that experience and the opportunities that we had to see everything. Um, I also want to thank my husband for being here today, Rick Croslin. Uh, he's also a part of Putnam City Schools, which um, was one of the volunteer activities for uh, one of our people in our group. Um, he's my own personal cheerleader and encourager and follows me through all of my adventures and everything. So thank you. Our next graduate is Nathan Donald with the YMCA of, Great, of Greater Oklahoma City. So it's, a, it's an honor to be here today and just appreciate just uh, a lot of the people that went into making this leadership class such a special thing. 
Uh, I would like to recognize the friends from the 2018 class because I'm the uh, unusual person who started in that class and made it about halfway and then had a, uh, a health issue that stopped me in that process and I'm blessed to say that I was able to start back up this year. So Jill, at this rate, I'll be here next year too. <laughs> Is that how it works? You just keep coming. But it really was an opportunity for me to once again uh, participate last year but then reiterate a lot of the wonderful things again. And that was, I think, uh, an unusual position to be in, but one that I really enjoyed. Getting to redo a couple activities, but continue to grow in that aspect of seeing wonderful things that happen all around our community every day and learn so much in the process. So my hope for this personally is just to continue to grow, not only personally for the commitment back to the community, but also just continue to see how the Y can try to do more in, in building partnerships and just growing towards the future as well. So thank you. Our next graduate is Brian Hancock with Edward Jones. Thank you. Well, you've heard enough from me, but I do want to introduce my guest. Uh, my office assistant is here. Her name is Jenny Lee. She's going to try to we're trying to get her more involved with the chamber. So be sure to say hi to her. And then, as Priscilla previously mentioned, Bill Hancock is here. We're not related, but he is one of my clients, and I had invited him to come as he was a, a past member of the, the leadership class. I did invite my wife to come, Philip, and she said, really, I only get so many vacation days, and you expect me to take one to come watch you get patted on the back for two hours? So I will get you her number to talk to her. <laughs> Our next graduate is Lindley Mead with First Bethany Bank. All right, well, I'll keep this short and sweet because I'm an introvert, so this is like my worst nightmare. So um, I'd first like to thank First Bethany Bank for the opportunity to participate in this year's leadership class. Um, I have a lot of great coworkers here with me today, uh, including my sister, so she's kind of my special guest. Um, I grew up and have lived in the Oklahoma City, Bethany, Northwest Oklahoma City area my entire life, and I have learned more about the city in the last 10 months than I have in my other 28 years. So it's just a great opportunity to learn about the inner workings of the city, uh, and I'm really grateful for the opportunity, and also getting to know eight great, fantastic people that I got to spend a day with each month. So thank you to the Chamber and to First Bethany. Appreciate it. Our next graduate is Hank Moore, City of Bethany. As a senior classmate of this group, <laughs> I, um, I came to Bethany 11 months ago, and um, one of the first things I did was to sign up for the leadership class at the encouragement of both Paige and Jill. And it has been a great networking. And my role as economic development director for the city of Bethany is I'm a transformer of the community. <laughs> and um, I can look around the room and probably a third of you I've met and have dealt with in some ways that has helped the city of Bethany. We've got a joint partnership with the YMCA to, to do life save, uh, life, provide life-saving uh, people to the pool for the summer. That's a collaborative uh, relationship. First Bank of Bethany has been very good to me as far as giving me background and connections. And so the process of community leadership is networking and networking is the chamber and we need to advance that. City of Bethany is going to step up and sponsor the next year's class because we believe in developing the leaders of tomorrow, today, and that we will be better off by investing in people today to be our leaders tomorrow. Thank you. Our next graduate is Sean Nathan with Sandler Training of Oklahoma. Hey, 
Hey, thank you. How's everyone doing? All right. So thank you for coming today. I'd like to introduce um, my table. We have from our team, uh, Mike Crandall and David Curran. And then we also brought uh, Kevin Richardson, Kevin Newsom, and Stephen Manuel. Thank you for joining me here today. So I'm, my involvement with this program came through my involvement with Sandler Training. And thanks to Mike Crandall, I've been able to uh, meet some great and engaging leaders with, from within our community at the same time. And it's been a great to get to learn from. As a transplant myself, I've been here two years, so I'm getting to know the city and getting to learn about Bethany and War Acres and, and the Northwest area as well. Um, I had something very intentional to say here, too. Um, <laughs> pull out my notes, sorry. Um, I've, I've most enjoyed learning about my uh, classmates and their passions, and we've shared some great experiences, of course, put because of jail in the Northwest Chamber. Um, programs like this enable citizens and businesses to learn about opportunities, um, strengths, and challenges within our own community. Um, I think that the future of our local future demands that we have developed those skilled and committed leaders um, in programs like this that understand those aspects. And that's why I'm happy to be here today and graduate from the 25th class of leadership um, Northwest. Thanks. Our next graduate is Alicia Rankin. She's the owner of Lily Grass Flowers and Decor. We'll keep this very short and sweet because you guys know I am behind the scenes type of person but I've been with the chamber for about seven years but have absolutely loved this family um, I call the chamber my business family and then um, this is uh, finally the year I was able to do the leadership and with my role in my company, I am an artistic person and I don't get to actually get out into the world. And so it really helped to learn about the government and the cities and how all of the different aspects of our culture work together and um, learned a lot of incredible things and I uh, recommend everybody to definitely get into this program because you will, um, know that it is definitely worth it. Thank you. And our last graduate is Jason Sargent. He's the owner of Go Print USA. That's actually fictitious information. The owner is covering for my butt today. <laughs> I, I would like to thank the chamber and the members of the community for their involvement in teaching us, helping us, guiding us through, uh, for those sponsors for the day, and to all those involved. Uh, there's, there's a lot of people to thank, and I hope everybody else has covered it. Thank you. So you guys will get to look at your class picture 25 years from now and see how much your hair colors change too. <laughs> uh, and with that, happy birthday, Northwest Leadership, and thank you all for coming today and being a part of this special celebration. We appreciate your commitment and service to our community. <laughs>